anywhere where we've got a catering outlet and we've got potential food waste, that'll go into those wheelie bins um, to try and keep rats out of it. Everything else, so black bag waste from the public um, to litter bins for the picnics and that sort of stuff, and the office waste will come up and go into the compactor, which is the one on the left there. Um, larger general waste that won't fit into the compactor goes into the large skip, which is the right hand one of those ones. Uh, and then we separate out things like metals for metal recycling, there's rubble that goes off for crushing for aggregates. Um, the large skip is a wood one, so it sort of goes off for wood recycling. Uh, and the lower one is also is an animal waste um, bin. Well, primarily our animal waste goes into wheelie bins at each individual house, but we've got a couple of bits of equipment that pick it up in bulk, and so they need a skip to deposit that into, um, which is what that one is. And then a couple of smaller containers. There's a grey bin which takes small electrical waste, uh, yeah, anything that happens to come out of the offices and that sort of stuff. Um, PCs, printers, laptops, that kind of stuff. Uh, and there's also a bin for vehicle batteries um, which come up here because we have a number of electric buggies around the park and every time they need a battery change we get a dozen or so batteries that have to be disposed of so they come up here as well. Um, no, no, little batteries, there's a bin in the shop um, for domestic portable batteries. Because um, obviously most of those come from the public, yeah. whose batteries and their cameras and everything run out and they haven't got any, so we sell them to more and take the old ones off them. Um, so have a little look around. Obviously, this is a working area, so just be mindful for trip hazards and that sort of thing. But this area here <laughs> is storage for fencing materials, so this isn't waste. Um, this is fresh materials that will be used in fencing projects. Anyway. <laughs> Um, no, animal waste from all of the animal houses where they're digging out the bedding and that sort of thing. Those go into wheelie bins and are taken away by Veolia. Um, this is for, there's a number of houses where they have um, sort of bulk beds, which is what's called a deep litter bed, which you change maybe once a month uh, and you change the whole thing at once. Uh, so that would all get shoveled into a, um, you know, some sort of vehicle and tipped into here. And there's another device called a paddock sweeper, which does what it says, it sweeps up the dung in the paddock. Uh, and obviously that can just skip to tip into as well. But most of the waste goes into wheelie bins, which is collected three times a week by the only So separate from that? Yes. <coughs> What's that behind me? Uh, that's a Vodafone mast, which isn't ours, unfortunately. <laughs> we don't own this patch of land. That's owned by uh, the chap who used to own the zoo. Um, so yeah, <laughs> nothing to do with us. Sorry, he says the gun collection was a separate yes. collection from the earlier. Yes, it's separate from the general waste. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's a dedicated vehicle that come around and just takes the animal waste and then takes it away. Okay. Do you have any printing on Yeah, we've got a lot of um, obviously office printers. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we got. We try and minimise our paper usage, so uh, yeah, we don't give out maps at the gate anymore and yeah. um, that sort of thing, but yeah, still get to a fair amount of just general office paperwork. Um, a lot of off-site printing as well, so leaflets, guidebooks, mm. um, trails, all those sorts of things, they're all printed off-site. So which parts of this area aren't owned? None of this area from the, from the gate is owned by us. Uh. We lease the bit that we're using, but we don't lease that That's bit it. because yeah. The chap who owns it maintains that bit because obviously Vodafone lease it from him for a lot more oh. than we pay him for this bit. <laughs> oh, okay. Did you, did you say you had a compost? Uh, we well, have a compost heap for green waste. Okay. Um, we don't have a composting facility for sort of anything else. Yeah. Okay. And then what does, happens to that one? Uh, well, it's, it's it either gets used on some of it gets used on small planting projects. Mm. Most of it is being saved up at the moment because there's going to be a lot of planting when that project's right. finished there. Uh, so yeah, the, the, I don't know what it is. there's a heap at the moment which will all come in and get used on that, for planting up that area. Um, I saw some uh, photovoltaics outside. You saw some what, eh? Photovoltaics. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So how much of the electricity do you produce? We've got, because we've got that little one we walked past yeah. and then there's two roof mounted ones. So we've got about 54 kilowatts um, altogether. Last year, just over 50,000 kilowatt hours, something like that. Depends on the sun, be a good day today. Yes. 
Yeah. Yeah, currently Veolia are our main waste contractor, so they do most of it. So are the only ones uh, that don't are the ones that can see? Yeah. So that's the, only that's the main, that's, well, yeah. The, um, there's things like, there's a company who do um, the washroom waste, so sanitary bins and that sort of stuff. That's a separate one. Um, and then there's specialist people like the light bulbs that go back to the supplier. In terms of uh, energy usage, mm -hmm. is that, have you got a figure for that? It's about 1.75 um, million kilowatt hours electric per year and about a million kilowatt hours thermal from the oil. Oil and a little bit of gas. Uh, what was the cooling system? Yeah, one uh, the cafe has a big air handling unit for air conditioning, so both heating and cooling. Um, yeah, but it's a massive great thing with refrigerant in it. Um, about 20 kilos, 22 kilos of refrigerant in that one. Um, there's a couple of other buildings that have cooling systems. The shop's got one, um, the educational building's got one, and then there's a couple of tiny ones uh, for animals, which is the, uh, where the reptiles are down the bottom here. Uh, there, what's the, I can't remember the class here though, there's a shop, the education now there's two, about 12 and a half kilowatts each. Cafe one is 20 or 30 kilowatts. Shop probably 10 to 15 ish, I would guess. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> uh, we don't have a permit for this one because this is all um, temporary storage of our own waste, so it doesn't require um, permitting. Um, the only permit we've got, as I said at the beginning, is over in the chalk pit, which has the temporary permit. Um, so they used to use it for temporary storage of the animal waste. Uh, in fact, they think they used to burn it. Yeah. And total control, yeah. Um, there's there's no real desire to invest in it as such because we no. don't own it. Um, but yeah, we do have control over what we do with it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, any other questions? Oh, yep. Um, is the site used outside of the zoo opening plans? Uh, the site is certainly occupied, yeah, and staff are in from about 7 o'clock, um, particularly with the animal, um, <coughs> on the animal side, getting all the animals ready. Um, a lot of the work in terms of like getting food and bedding to the animal houses happens before we open, because also there's a lot of vehicle movements, tractors and JCBs taking that stuff backwards and forwards. Um, cleaning staff are all in from sort of seven thirty ish, um, so I think you know doing all the, um, <coughs> all the visitor areas, like just generally checking for litter, um, but toilets and bot washrooms that sort of stuff. Um, shop staff, catering staff, they're all in um, before opening hours, making sure the park's ready, and then the office staff are typically you know standard nine to five ish. Yeah. Okay. And then in the evenings, is that is it quiet? Or? It's yeah. Oh, there's not many people staying after closing time. Most of the work happens at the front end of the day. And then, obviously, in the summer, keepers will be here until six because they have to be here until the visitors are gone. Um, but as soon as the park is cleared, then that's the work done for the day, and they clear out fairly quickly. Yeah.